I already done several videos about different aspects of the Mavic Air 2. I will post a link at the end of this video and in the description below. I must admit that I'm really impressed with this drone. Excellent value for money. In drone videos, I do use intelligent flight modes a lot because they allow for a smoother and consistent footage. In this video, I will analyze Focus Track, which is the interface for most intelligent flight modes of the Mavic Air 2. And this totally different from the previous way of accessing intelligent flight modes. And then I will show you how the three modes work. I will keep posting videos about all the different aspects of this drone. So if you're interested in Mavic Air 2 or in drones in general, I will seriously suggest you to subscribe to my channel. Using the old app DJI GO 4, there was a dedicated menu to access all the different intelligent flight modes. In the Air 2, there are three main modes grouped under the name Focus Track that DJI claims to be the most advanced tracking system in any of their drones, plus the hyperlapse mode, which is grouped in the video icon. I will analyze hyperlapse in a specific video. With a new interface in DJI Fly, in order to access Focus Track, just draw a square around the object you want to track. As simple as that. If the object is too small or if there is not enough contrast with the surrounding areas, an error message will appear. Once the object is detected, a square appears around it and the drone is immediately tracking in the default mode, Spotlight, either with a moving or with a static object. After a few seconds, the square becomes a pin showing the position of the target with a cross above it. At this point, it is possible to choose one of the other two modes, point of interest or attic track. To exit focus track, simply click on the cross or press the return to home button of your controller. I really like the way it works. It is extremely easy and fast to go into focus track and back to normal mode. In all focus track modes, we have full control of the two sticks of the controller and of the tilt of the gimbal, which is great. The minimum height for these modes has been drastically reduced and now work even at just a meter about ground level, which is excellent, especially when tracking people or for sport action. All three SP modes are compatible with Photos Track, Tripod, Normal and Sport. The only limitation of the Focus Track modes is that they are not available in 48, 50 and 60 frames per second. This is sad as it would be great to have the possibility of doing some slow motion, especially when shooting sport or action in general. In this mode, the target will be kept as much as possible in the same position on the screen. It can be used in two completely different modes, with a static or with a moving point of view. In the first method, the drone will move in any direction while maintaining the target in the same position in the frame. It is very similar to a very useful function previously called Course Lock. In manual mode, trying to maintain a target in a specific part of the frame, while flying in any direction, maybe with changes of altitude, and maybe tilting the gimbal, is one of the most difficult tasks. With Spotlight, it's much easier to obtain smooth footage at cost and speed under the same conditions. The typical simplest form of course lock is to set a landmark as a target in spotlight mode and then fly parallel to the target. The camera will remain fixed on the target, which will remain in the same position in the frame, revealing the subject and the background from different points of view.
It is possible to add a change in elevation to make things more interesting. This move is very effective when there are several elements at different distances in the background, thus creating a parallax effect. Here is an example with changes of elevation and also getting closer or farther away from the target. Note that the algorithm tries to keep the target in the frame. This instance I was tracking this building at the bottom of the frame and I tried to tilt the camera up to show the sea above the town but the gimbal did not respond as otherwise my target would go off the screen. When I moved the aircraft backwards the gimbal tilted upwards in order to keep the target in the same position in the frame thus revealing the Mediterranean Sea above the town. By moving towards the target while ascending, it is possible to achieve a sort of crane move, very difficult to perform manually. and also the reverse crane by moving away from the target while descending. The other way to use spotlight is to let the drone hover and the camera will follow the movement of the target. This can be very useful when following sport action, a comedian or a singer on stage and so on. But even with a moving target we can still move the drone in any direction. In this way Spotlight will operate in a similar way to track action, but as soon as we release the sticks the drone will over in a static position and the camera will try once again to keep the target in the same position in the frame. This is another very useful intelligent flight mode. It allows the drone to circle around the target, which is always a very cinematic move. After we click on the icon on the right, a double arrow appears and we can choose the direction and the speed by sliding the white dot. Again, this is a simpler and faster way to operate compared to previous implementation of point of interest in the Mavic line. I even remember with the Phantoms when we had to fly on top of a landmark to set it as a target. The target can be positioned anywhere in the screen, not just in the middle, thus allowing a more interesting composition. If we pan the camera sideways, after we release the stick, the target will be automatically repositioned in the chosen position in the screen. While orbiting we can move towards the target or farther away from it. We can modify the altitude and the tilt of the gimbal. In this new version of Point of Interest it is possible for the first time to orbit around a moving target, which opens a lot of new possibilities, especially for sport and action. Active Track has always been a very popular mode. A new version was expected by DJI to respond to the Skydio, a popular drone very much focused on tracking. I will do a specific in-depth video about Active Track 3.0 using a sport environment. In this one I will show you how Active Track works for following people at close range. 
After drawing a box around our target, we can tap on the icon to the left to engage active track. Then we choose one of the two modes, trace or parallel, and then tap on go. In trace mode the aircraft will follow the target from behind and will move to maintain a constant distance. It is possible to use the remote controller to move the drone around and when we are done the aircraft will keep following the target at a constant distance. It is also possible to have the drone in front of a target moving forward. In this case the aircraft will move backwards while keeping the camera on the target. I really appreciate the fact that uh, Action Track now operates at a much lower altitude compared to previous model, about a meter or three feet. In parallel mode the aircraft will follow the target from the side, trying to maintain a constant angle. It is also possible to follow a target in spotlight mode, but in this case the drone will hover on a fixed position, keeping the target in the same part of the frame. While in active track the aircraft will move to maintain the same distance to the target. In this clip you can see how the shadow of the drone moves in the same direction and at the same speed as the target. In tracking mode it's very important to have a good uh, obstacle avoidance system. The R2 has a system called APAS 3.0, which according to DJI offers the best obstacle avoidance currently in any DJI drone. This system not only identifies obstacles, but also tries to analyze them and find the best way to fly around them. In my experience it seems to work well, but the big limitation of the Mavic Air 2 for tracking is the lack of obstacle sensors on the sides, which makes action tracking in tight areas quite dangerous. At first I was a bit disappointed by the lack of my personal favorite intelligent flight mode, Waypoints 2.0, but I must admit that Spotlight and Point of Interest work extremely well and can do part of the job of Waypoints. I also like the new interface, very fast and easy to use. Attic Track works very well in simple follow me situations, but I'm not so sure about sport or action due to the lack of lateral obstacle sensor. I will keep publishing more videos about the Mavic Air 2, so don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye for now.